So uh, I, I usually don't like supporting big companies. I will say this Black Rifle coffee, and I get nothing from Black Rifle. They don't even know me, uh, but it's fucking damn good, man. I'm not a fan at all. No, um, I, I like I like their cans, uh, like these ones, uh, better than the sort of competition, I guess. Um, but anyways, uh, but let me rephrase, uh, rephrase. Not that I'm not a fan of Black Rifle Coffee because I like what they do in hiring veterans in their new um, whatever spaces that they put out. I'm just not a fan of coffee, period. Hey, you don't like coffee. Well, so anyways, Black Rifle, just a a shout out to you, even though we actually, at our store, we're big supporters of Fire Department Coffee. Yes, it's delicious. That is good coffee, and they support first responders and veterans, Yes, which is very cool. Um, So check out Fire Department Coffee uh, if you are listening to this. And if you go into a store, pick up a bag on your way. Anyways, um... We actually were chatting on the way here, and uh, we just did yoga. Yes, just did yoga, which I can't do half the yoga stuff. It's I've gotten pretty good. You did get pretty good. We do, you know, fart a lot. Yes, I mean, I, I think that's an inevitable consequence of <laughs> yoga, but and, uh, and, and age. <laughs> so, but but the discussion I wanted to have is about fitness and health for apes like us who for whatever time we have been training usually included moving heavy weights from point a to point b Mm -hmm. if we did cardio that was sprinting because we were chasing a bad guy or running away from someone shooting at us and um typically wearing heavy loads but we weren't very smart about it no and as we get older and both you and i suffered different injuries over the years and I think it's only these past couple of years that we realized we gotta we gotta play it a little gotta smarter. Adjust. And it and it was kind of a a part of a more holistic, wholesome type of approach. Cause it wasn't just a working out, right? We had to adjust diets, nutrition. We had to do blood work and see what is messed up in our body. Mm-hmm. I'll let you talk about your recent yeah. uh, lab work in a minute. Um but uh but yeah, so we we have to we learned some lessons. Uh, the hard way and our goal today was let's see if we can share some of those lessons with some of our listeners uh, assuming many of them are within our age group so what are some things and even if they're not take notes for when you do get to our age group (laughs) (laughs) when things are falling apart because one thing that's an inevitability is old age and death it's coming yeah just not quite sure about the order (laughs) right so Uh, but uh, so so let's we'll circle back to fitness and the workout in a little bit. Let's start actually with your blood work. So you just got your blood work done recently, right? Um, and this circles back to episode one, right? I, I, either one or two. I can't yeah, remember. with Doctor yeah. Nager, um, and we talked about testosterone health. And this in testosterone health, you know, typically is associated with men, but it also affects women as well. Um, actually, according to Doctor Nager, the majority of these uh, patients are actually female. Yeah. So and. And for those that don't know, especially after you get a certain age, I, I don't know the exact numbers. You typically have 35, I think, is when you really should start monitoring it. Unless you know, like those of us in our um, industry, you know, have been exposed to certain things that can affect it, like heavy metals and stuff like that from shooting and whatever the case may be. But um, so I finally got my T levels done, um, free and total, which I think are the two main ones that you want to get checked. Um and, and and to that point, sorry to cut you, but the majority of doctors, like I went to a primary care physician a few years back before I started being seen by Dr. Nager, and I told him the same symptoms I told Dr. Nager, and he wanted to do a blood work. And according to the blood work that he ran, my testosterone was normal. So either anything within range is normal, so you can be on the very lower end of it and right. also count as normal, or they're counting the wrong testosterone. Correct, correct. So um, learning from your experience with Dr. Nager, I specifically, you know, told my physician, well, she's phenomenal. You know, they did. I, they sent me to an independent um, laboratory to get the um, blood work done. And I already knew, you know, it was below the normal levels. Mm-hmm. Um, so she came back to me almost, not in a panic, but concerned. I'm like, you know, listen, doc, I already knew it was going to be low. You know, I've been in the military, law enforcement, blah, blah, blah. I could tell by the symptoms, you know, always tired. You know, um, we've been working out religiously. I've been gaining some great muscle mass, but can't get rid of that cortisol belly fat in my area. And even Dr. Nager said it. 
when I went into his office one day, he poked my belly and said, that's all hormonal. You know, because just by looking at it, he's like, your physique is great. That All I'm right envisioning, there. it's a Pillsbury. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um, so I, I, I kind of knew. Um, and then I started realizing, too, with these injuries, how it affected my mobility and stuff like that. Um, and testosterone, it affects everything, how you heal, how everything, you know. And, and I will say to that point, so, yeah, testosterone is supposed to assist in healing and recovery. Yeah. Funnily enough, for me at least, what happened is – almost a negative effect because I felt so good and so strong and I've been pushing weights that I haven't pushed ever. I mean, you've yeah. seen me deadlifting and whatever, weights that are more than double my body weight. Right. And then I started getting stupid injuries because <laughs> of that, right? So you got to... And, and that's where I, I'm making the transition before I go on testosterone um, treatments, um, mainly because although strength, we, you know, we always want strength and size in our profession, right? Because we're fighting bad guys, et cetera. But um, for me, I was realizing the negative effect it was having on my specific injuries. Um, even though the muscle was, you know, bulletproofing my injuries, my size was working against me, the weight. And that's, you know, when I approached you, I was like, all right, I got to modify my workouts, do more hit training, tone, and lose some weight. And hopefully with the testosterone treatments, I'll lose even more weight. Um, but it wasn't an eye opener for me. Right. I knew. I, I don't know that you're going to lose weight because I did not lose any weight. I gained 20 pounds. Yeah, but a muscle. Yeah, it's all good weight. I mean, my good, that's what I mean. Gain yeah. good weight. Um, so for those that didn't listen to our episode with uh, Dr. Negra, we'll certainly link it to our YouTube video and I'll put a link on our actual um uh, notes for this uh, episode so people can go back to it but um one thing that he does and and shout out to him i suppose um is that it i give him credit he wasn't eager to put me on hormonal uh therapy or replacement therapy right off the bat he said let's find out the root cause first and in my case it was high lead i mean one of the tests he did was checking for heavy metals and my lead was off the chart and just by going uh, th uh, through chelation, essentially you let like the body cleansing. clean. Yep. I mean, it was a lot of pills. It was nine pills a day for five days a week and do that for almost a year. But by doing that, my testosterone, which was also significantly below levels, went up to within range. It was still on the lower end, but it certainly went up. And then we tried some other things, uh, supplementation and so forth. So what, what Dr. Neger does he, he would call itself optimized health, right? It's like, I want to be proactive rather than reactive in terms of medicine. How do I keep you operating in top condition rather than just fixing symptoms when you finally or eventually get hit, right? Uh, with any disease or, or injury or whatever. So I give him a lot of credit for that. And uh, and even if you're listening and you are out of state, uh, certainly look him up. I know he does some telemedicine as well. And a lot of these labs can be done uh, remotely. Um, I don't know how he does the actual therapy. Like for me, I have to go in every four months where I get these pellets inserted into, used to be my butt chick, but my butt rejected it. It actually <laughs> pushed one back out. So now it's in my, uh, my lower back area. But, uh, anyways, I don't know. I will do that remotely. I, I'm sure there's people that he can contract out yeah, or whatnot, they, but, um, but yeah, so, so, for men and women, as you said, but certainly for men in our age group, get your testosterone check. Yes. Uh, there's so people understand it's not just about vanity either. It's not just about strength and mm. size. There's so many health benefits, including cardiac health and so forth, that are affected by hormonal levels. That oh, yeah. if, I, I mean, my family has a history of cardiac arrest in the early 50s. Right, My father died in his early 50s. My grandfather, his father in, in turn. So about three generations straight that I know of. My goal is to pass that. So for me, cardiac health is important. Right. And that's one of the main reasons why testosterone uh, and hormonal therapy was so important to me. Uh, so that is one element, right? So only, I did, you know what? Sorry, I know I'm all over the place. I listened to another per, uh, person podcast talking about some uh, medical tests that every man should do. And one of the things that they suggest, this guy is a physician by trade, uh, was a special operations uh, in special operations for years and then became a doctor for them. Uh, he said that to get your eyes checked, uh, not necessarily because of glasses, because your eyes are actually um, have a lot of indicators of other issues that you may have from different types of cancers, obviously, to uh, 
to blood pressure issues and so forth. So getting your eye exam done on a fairly regular basis is important and actually help uncover a lot of potential issues before they become issues. Yeah, so that was interesting. Digestive, obviously, digestive system. So go talk to a doctor, a good doctor, not the, you know, the same primary care physician that everybody else sees and you're just going because you want to check off a box and get a comprehensive uh, labs done. Yep, and and it's crazy because after I got the T-test done, then it became a whole, well, they're super low. We got to get all this other stuff checked out because – like you said, the correlation of testosterone and everything else, you know, from depression, from your mental health to your digestive health, to heart, you know, heart health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm like, great. Now I got to go get all these tests done, you know, just to. Let's try to get it done that. and find out because at least you have something that you can. Right. And because and, and it's funny because not it's not funny, but it, it goes back and forth. Right. Because it, let's say, theoretically speaking, if I had a certain condition, it would affect my testosterone and drop them down. Right. So then they have to be precautious like well let's make sure it's not something else bringing it down so that's why there's a battery of tests that follow thereafter um what or it could just be my testosterone is low because of my age my lifestyle from you know being exposed to from everything from depleted uranium i mean i will say (laughs) for a fact so two of the things so there's all questionnaire that i had to feel uh trying to uncover potential reasons for why testosterone may be low and two of the questions were have you ever had testicular trauma (laughs) <laughs> which I have, yes. and I know you have. I know I inflicted some of it. <laughs> yes. And uh, uh, traumatic brain injury, TBIs. Yes. And I know me being in the military, being around explosions, I'm sure you have as, as yes. well. So, you know, especially people in our line of work, uh, there's so many contrib- firefighters that are a lot around a lot of lead and mm-hmm. other um, chemicals uh, that may be affecting uh, hormonal levels. So, Get with a good doctor, get the labs done, check it out, and then come up with a plan uh, that is not reactive, but that is proactive, proactive yeah. and how to fix those. Uh, so let's get back to uh, to fitness and working out, right? Yes. So we, we used to go hard and heavy, and uh, up till about a couple months ago even, and, and uh, I hate myself for saying this, but the reality is that feeling so good Pushed me a little bit too far, too fast. Yes, you tore your nuts. I, oh, my hip flexor, but yeah, close <laughs> enough. Uh, <laughs> I suppose. I about tore well, my I'll, nuts I'll in yoga today. I, Dr. Nager, if you're listening to this, no, just kidding. <laughs> but my right bicep, left. That's right. I rotated a cough. My left hip flexor, um, they were all hurting to some degree or another. And I worked through it. What I found out is. You know, we're always going to have some aches and pains. It just comes with right. it. I mean, we tore our bodies up over the years. There's it no was doubt. awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> but I can't just go into a workout now and say, because I've seen you do that a couple of times. I'm like, oh, shit. Because, you know, like, I don't need to warm up. I'm just going right. to go and push my 235-pound, <laughs> you know, chest press, you know. Yeah. And that will be my first set and go up from there. And I'm like, no. So I found out that I need about 15 to 20 minutes of mobility mm-hmm. and getting my core temperature up and then some. Uh, some light stretching. I don't want to stretch a cold muscle, but certainly get it to a point. I need to get that done before I can actually. My my warmer is probably as long as my workout now. Yeah, yeah. Just there a lot of band work, uh, PVC pipe work, mm-hmm. uh, foam roller. Um, so I, I've been lifting more at home recently, just because of scheduling and convenience. But uh, but seriously, I, I go I go to my gym and it takes me about twenty to thirty minutes of just warming up. Yeah, and I think that's a part of. I, at least historically, used to neglect. And I was the same way, you know, yeah. learning from you guys. And <laughs> so it's definitely important. Yeah, but warm, warming up is so important as we get a little bit older. And then the workout itself. So I still see people our age that are, I'm going to fall back on my personal training background a little bit, but um, they're still doing these split routines where we isolating body parts, right? There's a chest day and a back day and an arm day and a leg day and so forth. And, Unless you're a competitive bodybuilder, it's actually counterproductive for you to do so in a sense that you are putting a lot of strain on joints, um, you're overworking certain muscles to the point that your recovery is not going to be sufficient to actually rebuild those muscles. So one thing that we've been doing and I think very successfully is doing whole body workouts. Right. Or at the very least, smaller splits, like there's an upper body 
push day and upper body pull day and leg day. And I think we rotate between those two routines, right? The whole body and the the basic split. Uh, because even on that, let's say upper body pull day, right? There's different back exercise, which is primary, and then we'll do some rear delts and a little bit of biceps. But the biceps got worked enough doing back, right? So I don't, I don't sit there doing 15 sets of bicep curls, right? Because uh, there's no point, right? Uh, plus, from a functional standpoint, I don't stand there curling things often, right. right? But I lift people, right? Or lift myself, right? So concentrating on pull ups and rows is a lot more important for me. Right. Um, so being smarter on that is important. I know one thing that you've been doing, and I'm actually following your suit in that, even though I recommend it, <laughs> yeah. is um, lowering the loads and increasing repetitions. Yes. Right. Um, again, if you're a power lifter or you play a sport that specifically requires you to have a certain level of force or strength in a specific movement, for most general male adults, there is no need for me to be able to deadlift 500 pounds. Right. Right. So if I deadlift 300 pounds, but I do double the amount of reps, then I get the health benefits from it a lot lower uh, tasking on my joints. Correct. Recovery is faster. Right. So, so um, I think you're doing that routine right now, right? Yes. And I, I combine more, again, because of my injuries, um, hit and weight. Mm-hmm. I'm doing more kettlebell work because like you said, it, for me, it works my stabilizers. And my biggest issue right now is my knee and my back, right? Even though, you know, I've had all these surgeries and I'm probably looking at more, I'm working with what I have and it's forcing those injuries to kind of forcing the, the little muscles around those injuries yeah, to, to work. Strengthen the yeah. And so forth. Um, Cause we neglect those small muscles when we yeah. isolate the primary muscles, like you said before. So, you know, changing my routine where, you know, lower weights and, and I'm using my body weight as the gauge. I don't I'm trying to do lesser weight as long as I can lift my body weight twice in some manner. I'm good. You know, so I, I don't want to I can't. De- there's no way I can deadlift what well, you deadlift. Cause, well, cause for our listeners, though, because you are bigger and stronger than me. But for our listeners, you did have multiple knee injuries <laughs> yeah, and surgeries, and lower back. back. Right. <laughs> So and and a shoulder surgery. Your whole spine is one big scar. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm I can't wait for the days where I can just get like a robotic spine or something like that. I'll probably be dead by the Robocop. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, but yes, I'm combining the lesser weight, more reps, but also combining the functional movements with weighted bats and kettlebells. Yeah, you're big fan of those. I haven't played with those. Yeah, I I love it. Um, again, because I'm not as well rehearsed as you know in in working out, I always come to you for guidance. Um, but the, again, the movements are functional based on what I do, fighting, shooting, et cetera. And they force those small stabilizing muscles to work. So you're, you end up being sore in other parts of your body that are, you're like, I didn't even work that out, <laughs> you right. know, but it's because it, it's complimenting. Yeah, that's it. awesome. Um, one question that I get often asked by our members or, or people that uh, I come in contact with and know a little bit about my background is about what's the best kind of cardio for them to do, right? Because men our age, yeah, it's a little bit harder for us to lose fat once we get it, right? Um, cardiac health is important. Which is one of my issues now right? as well. So, so what's the best thing for them to do? And, and I will say I am one of those that do as I say, not as I do when it comes to cardio because my cardio does consist of um, – of running, a lot of running, um, not because I necessarily like running, but I find that for me, that works best. But I will be the first one to admit that running is a lot of impact yes. on your spine and knees. Yeah, I can't run at all. No. And and there's no need for someone to run unless, again, they play a sport where that is an it's integral required, part yeah. of it, right? Uh, so when we work with athletes, then obviously they have to run. Uh, but uh, for the majority of the population, unless it is something that you have to do, Running doesn't have all those benefits. Or let let me rephrase it. There's other ways that are healthier and safer specifically for oh, adult yeah. males to accomplish the same thing. So one thing that I recommend is actually rocking. Right? Rocking. Yep. Yeah, Take right, your right. uh go outside if you can. By the way, yeah. the health benefits of just being in yep. nature and fresh air and you know, the birds chirping around and mm. especially if you do it by yourself, just the mental and so I used to do. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome, right? But Assuming you can't do that, you don't have the access to to trails or whatnot, even just getting on a treadmill, putting on a slight incline, um, kind of like a brisk walk uh, pace, and take a backpack, mm-hmm. put a couple of weights in it, and just walk. Yeah. Um, you're going to burn a lot more calories. Your heart rate is going to be obviously elevated, and there's a lot less pressure on your joints. 
Uh, I am a big fan of intervals. So you said you somewhat of a HIIT workout. Yep. And for those that don't know, HIIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. So it's, it's H-I-I-T. T, yes. Uh, so I like doing it on treadmill by running sprints, uh, uphill sprints. But uh, the best way to get that HIIT workout in, and it's been proven by research upon research upon research that I read, is actually boxing or working a bag, yeah. right? It gets it hearted up. It works your whole body, core, upper body, legs, and so forth. <laughs> it's funny you say that because, um, you know, I have a, one of those uh, VRs, mm -hmm. and I got a boxing game on it. And, I mean, within the first minute of the first round fighting, I am drenched in sweat. My heart rate is raising, yep. and I'm having fun with it. You right. Know? So it was pretty cool. And not to mention that it's functional for our lives because – you know, it's a way for us to get those repetitions or right. striking combinations. Oh, yeah, yeah. And my wife can't yell at me. She's like, what are you doing in the video games? So I was like, no, no, no. I'm working, working on my hard. heart health. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm it's sure boxing. <laughs> Standing in the middle of a room with a giant headset over my eyes, <laughs> swinging at nothing. Can't wait to see you. Because your living room is not that big. I can't wait to see you I do trip on something. I'm going to bring it. You know what? I'm going to bring it to Masada. And I'm gonna have you guys try it. Well, that'll be awesome. Oh yes, it, it's it's a great time. We should actually record it for Silver we, Savage. We, we should. <laughs> oh, actually, you can uh, cast it onto the phone and record it. So it's oh, that'll pretty, be awesome. Yeah. Um, what I do for cardio, if you don't mind me interviewing, because I, I can't run right because right. my injuries. I mean, I can run, but it's with a severe limp. And as soon as there's any significant impact on my it's more of a right, graceful wobble, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I have to agree with that. <laughs> it's a graceful wobble. Um, I, I ride bike. Yeah, um, that's my option. Um, whether I can't it's, do that, it, it kills my anus. So funny you should say that. <laughs> um, I found these great pair of shorts with a padded anus area mm -hmm. anus. <laughs> on, <laughs> on Amazon. I'm actually have recommended them like three times now, and I, I swear by them. Um, I can go a full hour without severe anus pain with okay. these shorts. <laughs> All right, it, 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 they're funny. They feel funny when you put them on. Excuse my French, but it, not that I know what it feels like to wear a tampon or a a maxi pad imagine but if you can imagine wearing <laughs> one i would assume this is what it feels like because it's in that you know grundle area and there's a Hold lot on, of i lost you I, I i know we're digressing but as far as i know tempo goes inside yeah sorry i didn't mean that all right but, yeah but whatever it's padded <laughs> your your genitalia and your taint and your anus are padded it has okay. padding in those areas so i know a lot of tray athletes wear that i mean if you do an iron man and you're going to be able to bike for 100 yes. miles which was always one of the things on my bucket list. I wanted to do it by the time I turned 40. That never happened because, you know, surgeries and stuff. Yeah. But, um, you know, the idea of swimming two miles and, and bike, yeah, biking out. Yeah. Is it miles or kilometers? Might be kilometers. We're in America. And then running it's a full miles. marathon at the end. Well, I know. I know. They still break it up traditionally. Yeah, I think that's 2.4 kilometers, mm -hmm. not 20 kilometers. I, I think it's all kilometers. I'll cheer you on from the sidelines. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And so I'm everyone. wrong. I don't know. Whatever a full Iron Man <laughs> is. I want to I wanna be able to say that I'm an Iron Man. Um, you are an Iron Man. A different Iron You're Man. a macho man. <laughs> macho, um, macho so, man. So we talk about fitness, right? We talked about testosterone. We talked about. You know, getting your your lab work done. You yeah, so get forth. it checked. I, you know, I think men are so reluctant, especially savages. You know, because we're so type A. Yep. Um, There's nothing wrong with me, or I'm going to work through this. Yes, and or like my brother-in-law, who I won't blow him up. Former Marine, retired cop. His philosophy is: if I don't go to the doctor and they tell me what's nothing wrong, wrong, nothing is wrong. <laughs> yep. Um, so <laughs> don't be that person because if heaven forbid something happens, there is a point where it could be too late. Um, so yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, you get wanna, your prostate checked. Yes, uh, that's yeah. I'm, you just do that for fun, but yes. Um, <laughs> but that that uh, that's important. That's one of those easy things to uncover early, and it's still treatable. Because if you catch it too late, there, there's yeah, nothing I, to do about you it. know my uh, my my doctor after I got my butt work done, they'll say, yeah, we got to check your prostate and you know everything else. And I was like, great, I'm, I'm gonna you know I got butthole cancer or something. She goes, no. I said, is, and I said, isn't that the leading cause of death of men? She goes, no, it's heart disease. I was like, and I said, oh, wait, at least I'm not going to die from an asshole. It'll be a heart that kills me. <laughs> <laughs> it may be an asshole that will kill you. It may not be your own. Right. Uh, so. Let's talk about nutrition real quick because that, that's a big one, yeah. right? There's so many diets out there. And, and, you know, anything from going vegan to going the exact opposite with a carnivore. I don't know what's what anymore. You know, paleo type diets and. This is what I tell people, everything in moderation, right? Yeah. Everything in moderation. So I prioritize protein 
uh, for a few reasons. First and I've of all, started doing that. Yes, yeah, supporting muscle growth and so forth, which is important at our age. Uh, it's uh, it's saturating the right word, but it fills you up. More yes, than it, it satiates. It satiates. Uh, so that's, I feel like I don't need as much if I prioritize protein. And I've heard that so many times. I follow Dr. Jordan Peterson um, for no other reason than I like his uh, his advice. I don't know what his you know politics or philosophies are, but that's one of the things he says. Like he's a guy that eats a steak every day. He's prioritized proteins because yep. it satiates the hunger and it builds the body. Right. And the problem a lot a lot of meats got bad reputation because of all the chemicals and hormones that were being you know driven into right. the. Uh, the cows and chickens to to make them plumpier and so forth. So if you stay with the organic stuff, and I know there's a cost associated, but if you stick to grass-fed, organic-type meats, uh, there, there's honestly, to the best of my knowledge, again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not trying to give advice to anybody on that end, but the, the risk is significantly lower and the benefits far outweigh any risks. The whole thing about, you know, Meats are bad for you if you have heart issues. Eggs are bad for you if you have heart issues. I mean, that's all been debunked. Since. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, people refuse to eat yolk for the longer time, longest time. And you know, you saw me yesterday. We had breakfast, and the health breakfast was an egg white omelet. And I specifically asked, "Can you make it with all eggs?" Mm-hmm. Because yep. you need a yolk in order to get complete protein. Correct. So, Correct. Uh, yeah, the, the rest of the amino acids in the egg white are useless without a yolk. Listen, back in what, 1930s, I think, 1930s, 1940s, Coca Cola was sold as a tonic that helped with headaches and, and like brain issues. And I stuff think like GI that. system. It, yeah, yeah. yeah it's our stomach. <laughs> and I still take it. If I have stomach <laughs> issues, I drink her cola. So, <laughs> but you know, it's full of sugars and all this stuff. So, like, and all the point I'm trying to make is like they have these, these ideas at first, but at the end of the day, you know, do right. your research. Yep. And, yeah, so everything in moderation. Uh, same thing with alcoholic beverages. Yeah, moderation, um, moderation. Exactly. Because uh, at the end of the day, alcohol is poison. You're drinking alcohol. <laughs> that is true. In, in, in mass amounts. Exactly. Women. But the, the flip, and I'm going to kind of refer back to Dr. Neger. I think he said that in the podcast. It actually, yeah, because it's it a forces toxin, your liver to clean. Yeah, it cleans, cleans up. Out. So again, if you have a little bit, you know, three, four times a week, um, a drink, um, it's right. not bad. It may actually be good. Again, that's and and that's with and, anything. Moderation, right. moderation, moderation. And moderation. pick your drinks. I mm-hmm. stop drinking beers or I don't drink them as often. I prefer wine or bourbon. Yeah, right. Just because it's healthier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> vegetables and fruits. Uh, I love people that come to me and say I don't like to eat fruit because there's a lot of sugar in them. No, and that's yet, natural. Yeah, I mean, to sugars. know one person that got. Fat eating fruit. Yes, I love fruit. I yeah. tell my kids they can have all the fruit they want. You know, make yeah. fruit salads. Eat, eat, eat awesome. it up. Yep. Eat it up. It's awesome. It's great. So, uh, so yeah, just just balance, prioritize, minimize processed food, minimize uh, carbs in the sense of like breads and and pasta and stuff like that. Right. And, and I will tell you what made the change for me. The biggest one of the biggest changes for me was not eating late. Okay. You know, like after a certain time, yeah. cut myself off. And I know there's these fasting diets and stuff like that. I didn't even go that far. Yeah. Um, I actually followed one of uh, Jordan Peterson's advices. He goes, eat dinner and brush your teeth immediately after. You won't want to eat again. And I started I started doing that. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to have to brush my teeth again. No, nah, I don't want to have to brush my teeth again. That's funny. And I just would drink water if, if I got... You know, interesting. I'll have like to that. try that. For me, the problem is like tonight, right? I'm going to be teaching classes till 8 30 at night. Right. But I get home, it's 9 30. I got up dinner and, you know, it's just late. I go to bed right after dinner. It's, it's, and tough. that's the, that's the problem. So but I, that's I, a lifestyle thing. Yeah, it, it is. Just, but thankfully, you get up early and you work out too. I do. So, so I do. that might kind of, to some extent, I do try to knowing that I'm not going to have the time to digest fully, you know, and I don't want to go to bed, you know, on a bowl of pasta or whatever. I, my dinner typically is a salad. Yeah. And uh, and what we call a lean and green or green and lean, right? There, there's some some green leafy vegetables and uh, and some sort of a lean protein. So like a chicken breast or right. something like that. Or tuna so, so what I do, and this happened on Mondays, which are my late, late days, mm-hmm. I got home and... You know, my, my wife made one of my favorite dishes, just pasta, you know, pasta, meat sauce. And I was like, well, cool, I hadn't eaten all day. So this is OK. This is my carb of the day. But it was, you know, nine o'clock at night. So I just stayed up. I made sure I had three hours, oh, wow. three to four hours to digest my food. And I actually sat upright. 
So, you know, put on my heat pad, throw on my ice pads, my STEM machine on my knee, you know, got a book, put on my favorite show. And literally I watched the clock, even if I was getting sleepy, kept myself up for four hours to allow for at least, you know, that initial stage of digestion to go through. And then I let myself go to sleep. Now, cool. now the, you know, the con of that is I'm exhausted because I'm right. not getting them out of right. sleep. You got you to find that balance. So I, I have been waking up at five in the morning every day. That's consistent. I've been doing that for a few months. That's my goal. Um, and, and I'm loving it. I get up. I have my morning routine. Um, by 6 a.m., I have my pre-workout. I'm ready to work out. So by 7 a.m., post-shower, I'm good to tackle the day, man. It's that, been awesome. That's what I'm trying to do. But again, what's one of the negative effects of low testosterone? Tired. You're tired. And, and, and it's, it's a exhausted. different type of tired. It is. Yeah. It is. I told you, when was it? Yesterday, the day before, where uh, we were meeting up to go teach a presentation. I dropped the kids off. And I'm, the whole time, I'm just dragging. It feels like my body was just made of lead. And went back home, sat on the couch, and literally passed out. It wasn't like just a little snooze or nap. It was rock hard passing out. And I can't help it. And I hate it. That's also your body it. telling you something, man. You, oh, yeah. you don't sleep well to begin with, <laughs> which is a whole different conversation, right? If you talk about health and wellness, you got to talk about proper rest and oh, sleep. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, people are like, you know, I don't know Jocko Willings mm -hmm. personally, and certainly don't want to piss him off. Oh, no, no. Like I, I, I think I would be afraid to be in his presence. I would like to be in his presence because I, I think we'll have a good conversation. But that aside, you know, they're all waking up at 4.30 in the morning. He takes a picture of his Timex watch every morning. He's yeah. up at 4.30 <laughs> doing his stuff. And I'm like, I don't necessarily disagree with that. But did you get the amount of sleep you need? And that varies from person yep. to person, yes, right? Some does. people can get away on five, six hours. I need seven or eight. Anything below that, I'll be tired. Testosterone yep. or not testosterone, doesn't mm -hmm. matter, right? Now, if I sleep more than eight hours, I'm also dragging. Yep. Right? That sleep inertia thing mm -hmm. takes over. So I know my body and what my body needs, and yep. people have to find that out for themselves, yep. right? Uh, so definitely take the time to do your own homework on that. Um, I do want to actually prompt our listeners and uh, and viewers, if you guys don't mind, it, it certainly helps us a lot. Um, let us know what you thought of our conversation. Let us know what you do. Uh, maybe some tips that you can give other listeners that are in the same boat as us. Um, just would love to kind of include you guys in the conversation, make it a little more interactive. Send us a message. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you do. And um, we'll make sure to include that. And even if you don't know who we are and they're new listeners, throw it on there. Um, BK has no problem telling his story. Yep. I got no problem telling you about me. There's a lot of people. You just know me as Steve and Mo is BK. I, I rarely talk about myself, but uh, I'm more than happy to do so. Yep. so. You're probably the only person who really knows the majority of the things I've actually done. So I don't think even. And that's wife, why I have nightmares. <laughs> <from> your stories. <laughs> yeah, I don't think even my wife does. And she got an, an exposure to that when I got the interview for the therapy for the dog. dog. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't, I just don't talk about it. And you know what? Those, those that talk a lot typically, you know, a lot of it is made up. That's how I found out. <laughs> um, but that, that aside, so uh, seriously, um, Please uh, subscribe and, and share this. Share this with other people. Send the link to others. Invite them to come and listen. Uh, we investing in a better studio. We are getting new equipment. We're trying to make this more professional, better for you. We have some great, awesome guests lined up. Yes, we do. So uh, you're going to hear from other people as well. And I think that's all I got. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, don't, don't be that person. Get yourself checked. Oh, yeah. Because um, I think we both were that person for a while. Oh, yeah. Until I think we still are on some things, but that's just, you know, uh, a we are. I find myself trying to do kicks and things that I shouldn't be doing because of my injuries, but I'm adjusting. So, this is Steve showing up to a bell test, <laughs> or a, we don't have bell test. It's a promotional test, right? This is Steve coming up to assist and be for psychological and moral encouragement. And he's, he's with a cane, <laughs> can't really walk much that day. His back is really killing him, but there's like, an individual testing for one of our more advanced levels. Yes. And I hear Steve say, PK, take him down. And as soon as I take him down, he jumps on top of him and starts grappling. <laughs> that is an injured Steve. And, and, and I felt so alive. Right? <laughs> I That's felt awesome. so alive. So uh, I, I think we need to do one more thing. We need to come up with like a closing remark, like something that, you know, when we do our videos from Masada, we say, you know, watch your yeah, snakes. Yeah. We got to find something for Silver yeah. Savage. Stay savage. Stay savage. <laughs> so everybody out there, 
Stay savage. Stay savage.